a year ago at the 2018 State of the City Address, I spoke about the courage to embrace change. In my opinion, it's harder to embrace change than it is to sit and ponder and watch people make change around you. This impedes progress. Throughout this year, I don't know about you, but I've been uh, optimistic, I've been energized at how Stonecrest citizens have taken a stand at city council meetings and have championed change here in our community. This was the vision of the new city. This was the vision of Mayor Jason Laird. To empower citizens to make progress and change for the things that are important to your families and to your community. For us to have a 10-foot view versus a 1,000-foot view the way things used to be. With a mayor and the Stonecrest City Council members, we've seen dialogue at the City Council meetings and a mayor and City Council members who rush to the aid of their constituents instead of running from them. We all should be proud of the planning, the pondering, the timelining, the measuring, the pothole fixing, and I could go on and on and on. The work that the mayor, along with the city council members, have endured this year on our behalf. Change doesn't happen overnight. And we have to remember that the city of Stonecrest is still in its infancy. But our council members, along with our mayor, have taken up our charge and have come leaps and bounds in a short period of time. And if you look at where we were this year versus where we are now, I'm here to tell you that these people on this front row, along with your mayor, work tirelessly. And like I said before, you can see them at the grocery store, you can see them at church, and you have their ear. Again, you have the 10th version versus the 1,000th version. That is the vision of the city. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you, to some, and then welcome back to others, the Honorable Mayor, Jason Lanner.
Chris on in that we were having from all the folks um, uh, that we have been talking with and moving around to from there. Uh, from there. So what I do want to do is pause for a second because people have mentioned it, but I want you all to know from me how our city council people work. And I want you to give a round of applause.
385 inspections. That's property maintenance, alcohol and license, building code violations. And I really want us to give them a round of applause. So thank you. So, when they go from there, what happens afterwards? You go to court. <laughs> and this is court, as a matter of fact. So we started the judicial arm, uh, judicial arm of the Code Enforcement Effect in 2018. Uh, we have two municipal court judges. I saw uh, Judge Sharon, I know, all right, and, but I didn't see a, a wine truck. All right, excellent. Uh, one certified municipal court clerk and, and created Stonecrest Probation Office four court enforcement officers, four building and land development staffers that are sworn in, 219 citations for 332 violations, and collecting the money, 25,949 in fines that were assessed. Parks and Recreation. So, from here, Parks and Recreation actually builds the brand and helps to promote healthy living and tourism. So working with the Cab County, and I want to say that clearly, working with the Cab County, we're going to talk about a couple of things for a smooth transition of parks uh, to the Stonecrest operation. There are nine parks in Stonecrest to be acquired. Gregory Mosley Park, Southeast Athletic Center, Arabian Mountain Nature Preserve, Farrington, Salem, Browns Mill, uh, Everett, Chestnut Lakes, and Miller Road. And we've been negotiating that continuously uh, with the county to make sure we have a smooth transition. So with the Parks and Rec uh, Department, we have a staff that's already five Parks and Rec personnel uh, led by uh, Mr. Palm. I saw Mr. Palm here. Mr. Palm, are you still here? There he is. Look at him. So the city will uh, contract uh, with a vendor to provide park maintenance, landscape, and general storage services upon acquisition as we continue. Uh, we've closed on eight acres at the corner of Salem Road and Evans Mill. Now, what that is? All right, that is traffic central of the world. Now, what was going to happen there was a gas station. So the citizens came out. We heard you clearly. Councilman Turner and I, uh, George Turner, worked diligently with the uh, actual contractor for that uh, particular eight acres who actually owned the land. So instead of, in this one instance, instead of it being an uproar with regards to having a, what you would call a sea store, just a little gas station store there, which is barely gas, now we get a park and we get a correct intersection to be able to control what happens. City Council um, moves into the master plan, and we will actually be having a naming contest for that particular park. So, you see this gentleman here on the end, Robert Haygood, Brownsville Recreation Center? I've known Mr. Haygood for double three years. And one thing that um, um, my parks director and I figured out, uh, along with being uh, told by the general public, is that they didn't want a disruption. And that's what we have been doing. We have been listening to the public. We don't want a disruption. We want these people here. We want these things to happen. Well, the First Lady and I, we raised our kids through this system. We've been out here more than 30 years, so we know exactly what happens in Brownsville Park in the recreation system. So um, we went to uh, the Brownsville Center, had a conversation with Mr. A. Good. Uh, finish up some meetings in the Cab County. And this is where the partnership and collaboration lies. We were able to have the meetings with regards to keeping those employees in place, having no disruption in their service, having no disruption with the parents, and being able to work through this situation so that everybody was satisfied with regards to what needs to happen. Make sense? Yes, that's collaboration, that's partnership, that's vision. Thank you.
was no tax increase, and we guaranteed it. So, what happens on that end of it is let's explain it in detail. Here's the property tax that's an unincorporated Gab County, right here. And this is in this area that's unincorporated at the time. Then we move to an incorporated area that's already been in existence. And I picked this up, Representative Jones. How to read the tax bill, where the numbers are. Thank you for that, sir. I appreciate that. Because I was getting beat. Like I had stole something from a store, right? <laughs> we have this figured out. On this end of it, here is the actual millage rate with regards to the Cab County. And since Deborah and I own property in different areas, this is particularly a lot for you. There is a city tax. Here's an area for the city tax. And we saw that there wouldn't be a double tax. We say it all the time, it's worth saying. It won't be a double tax. Thanks. So from here, zero property tax in the city of Stonecrest.
Dave Marco, Mr. Marcus. I saw Missy, uh, Missy Man. Who else is here? Uh, 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 Sean Jones. Uh, Suzanne Frick. Anybody else? Anybody else? Good. Excellent. Excellent. All citizens based making decisions to make sure things go in the way your tax dollars are spent. Education committee. Uh, Dr. Lee, are you here? All right. Anybody else from the education committee? There she is. Just stand right there. Thank you. Wait a minute. There she is. Excellent. 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 Let me you. That is a heavy lift committee. All I have to do is read social media. Every other thing is how our schools have to be improved. And I take my learnings, if you will, with regards to what operationally happens in that environment and how we can understand it from Mr. Joe Tibbett, our internal office, who is also a professional in the school district itself. So that is a difficult um, question that we continue to have with regards to what are you going to do about the school? So the best thing that we have in this arena is to make sure that we put the right people on the right committee to partner with the school system. Thank you and for your dedication. East Metro, the CAB, CID Steering Committee. I saw Mr. Knight. All right. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Representative Carter, are you still here? Oh, uh, let's give Representative Carter a hand because she's actually the one to develop the East Metro CID. Thank you, sir. So we have that steering committee uh, that's together led by Representative Clanton. There you go. All right. Thank you. And with regards to the East Metro CID steering committee, um, we're in partnership with regards to what we are going to do, Representative Carter, with regards to how funding is done, what they're going to make in this area, what they're going to do in that particular area itself, and then make sure we have the right collaboration and partnership. Uh, the Park Steering Committee, uh, there was a whole plethora of people here this year. I saw uh, Mirkinus, there she is, uh, Kelly Ford, I think he's on it, and uh, everybody said, so raise your hand, is there. Good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Our Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee, raise your hand. Now that's a, yeah, here we go. So, the reason for this is that this is the most complex thing that we had to work with with absolutely knowing where we were going faster in the future. 2038 as far out as we are from that standpoint. So it is absolutely the roadmap of what is happening with us from the city standpoint and what happens in this arena. And thank you all for uh, indulging me for calling the folks out because they work hard and their heart is in the right place. And when you're doing something city-wise without compensation and it's hard, you should be recognized. Film and Television Commission, um, that is led by the uncomfortable Mr. Turner. Where is he? There he is. Yeah. 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 And our Film Commission members, do we have any here today? All oh, right, excellent. Thanks, Bell. Oh, there she is. For a moment, Scott. All right, good deal. Um, and our Transportation Committee, <laughs> oh, this is the Teresa, don't get him in the back of the head because you're sitting down. This is Mr. George Turner. <laughs> 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 and his staff and the folks that remember this on the Transportation Committee. Another long term, hard to figure out where we need to go next environment with regards to transportation, light rail, heavy rail, BRT, what's coming to this area here in Stonecrest. <laughs> So, my favorite thing to do is the Mayor's Drink Talk Series. Absolutely a favorite thing to do. Uh, city Council meetings, Joel, are really rich. You know, they come up, they come to the mic, they ask questions, we first things, we move things forward, that particular thing. But it's Drink Talk, oh, 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 we just let them go at it. <laughs> because that's when you really feel, that's when you really know how people feel. And the way we've been able to do this is in a community and respectful way. Just come and tell us what we need to do. Let's talk about it and move forward from there. And in our uh, Straight Talk series, we cover splops, we cover the dumping of this trash, these potholes that we were starting being able to fill, and quite frankly, undesirable developments. And folks will let you know. All you have to do is come to Straight Talk 
they will tell you exactly what is all in their mind and what needs to happen from there. This top piece here on Salem Road and Evansville Road, this is one of two options that we're looking at. Senator Jones talked about it earlier with regards to the roundabout or a traffic signal. But we are going to do something at that intersection and other intersections also because it's dangerous. If you're trying to come out of Salem Road, going on the Evansville Road, you have to look beyond the trees and the traffic at the same time and hope, Julian, there's nobody coming too fast around that corner. So we're going to fix that because we have the ability to do so. And I thought one of the proudest things that we've done, and we talked about it earlier, was we were able to negotiate and be able to take that same space and instead of putting a gas station on it, make it either a passive park or whatever, uh, uh, Mr. Palmist and the team decides to bring the council. Thank you. That's the Stonecrest. This is led by our economic development director, Ms. Brown. But again, Mr. Samir Wright. All right. And what we've tried to do is put a council person or two on each committee with regards to what we're working on. So, along with Mrs. Wright and uh, Councilman Clinton, there's a customer service initiative that is designed to improve the customer service experience in Stonecrest and encourage economic growth through better business expansion in the new business locations. Let me give you an example. We're going to appreciate this. So, what the team is doing is actually bringing people in with regards to those businesses and training them and getting them certified in customer service and then they can earn the Stonecrest seal of badge. So you'll know when you're going to shop there or you're going to eat in that place, you'll have the right seal of badge. So, we're going to help some folks whether they want us to help them or not. <laughs> and we're going to start with Denny's. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. 
my office makes a laugh because they know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so the Stonecrest community uh, activity, some best fun that we have at Stonecrest Santa. Uh, we call it different things, Stonecrest Falls, Stonecrest at Santa, but we have a great time. There's nothing like seeing the face of a child that has no gift until you give them one. It happens every year throughout the school district. It is unbelievable with regard to the need that these kids have on that end of it, and we really enjoy it. That's one. Community activities, one of the favorite things that's going to happen. Um, uh, this is probably one of my most favorite activities that we're going to do. So we met last week with regards to our HOA breakout strategy. We started talking to different homeowners associations and what was happening in their area, what needed to be um, changed around. We had code enforcement there, we had community cultural affairs there, and we had some very good conversations as to, you know, uh, what they wanted and where they wanted to go from, to from here. You know, so Pastor is like what you're doing, ground up with regards to where we are in this area. So, what we're going to do, we're taking this to every neighborhood this summer. We're going to figure out what your needs are. We're going to find out what we specifically need to go to from there. What are your hot issues on this side? And do you understand that there are some neighborhoods here that don't have homeowner association? I was shocked. <laughs> and once we found that out, Teresa, I looked around and said, if that's going to be the case, then we're going to help you form one. We're going to help you get organized. We're going to help the things that's, that's going to happen in this area. So, folks, why are we talking about this in this way? We're for regards to collaboration. We're for regards to leadership, we're for regards to vision, is that we are going to help you from a municipal standpoint. That's what forming a city and running a city is all about. Having your local governance help the people to get the things that they want to go and be. Does that make sense? That's why we're here, so that we can put things in place to make it happen. One of my favorite things to do also is our international partnerships. Uh, here with uh, the uh, Granger, uh, uh, David Granger here of the uh, President of Guyana. Uh, we've had an opportunity to visit with him here and abroad. Uh, and uh, myself and uh, Ms. Dara Franklin uh, went to Georgetown and we ended up being three sister cities in Guyana. I love Caribbean. I love Caribbean. I love Caribbean people. They know how to eat, what to do. <laughs> um, and a very, very uh, particular about their culture and supporting their culture and what they needed to do from this standpoint. So what the trade-off is is this. See, we're experts here now on contract services. We're experts on this particular part of how to deliver the most efficient service in the most efficient way. So in trade for what we're doing with them and some of the international companies that they have introduced to us, that's our trade back to them is to teach them with regards to how to work in an environment for a contract for services piece. Instead of how to make 800 employees, if you contract with 500 and hire 300, all specific in that deal, and so those people who can still make a living is either as contractors or either as their direct employees. All right. The big boy in the boat has lots of stalkers. This is how we get our rooms paid. So working with the CAP County to bring over $47 million in infrastructure and capital improvements to the city of Stonecrest for the next six years. So with this, you'll start to see the small signs, your pennies at work here. Even this week, the signs are going up with regards to uh, popping up to Stonecrest, beginning to pay our first four miles of roads on 18 streets and a total reconstruction of Turner Hill Road. That means digging Turner Hill Road all the way down to the dirt and putting it back. And with that, what happens is that, do uh, you all remember the referendum that actually came out about a year or so ago? You'll be surprised that people that didn't want to take that penny and then turn around and make these roads, but I'm so glad that we live in a majority society uh, so that people can vote and then have your pennies done from there. All right? So, public works in Stonecrest, led by Mr. Joyner here, the first 
you're receiving a GDOT funding for a local maintenance improvement plan. It's one of those initials again we talked about. LMAD. Funds to begin payment in stone press. So we've already received more than half a million dollars from GDOT. We have the unused approximate a million and a half from SPLOS as matching funds, which we actually have in the bank that we can write a check on. Our payment will begin Monday, next Monday, May 13th. And the right away maintenance, this is the favorite thing that I have here that I want you all to know about. I have a, I have a, I have a small pet peeve, uh, Mr. Edward. Uh, disrespectful children and trash. Oh, my God. Trash. Do you know trash will stop economic development in every corner of the world? Period. Because the first thing that happens when every column is right in that is that they take their tour first. Then we we get the call. So if there's a busted down fence or somebody put their trash on top of their car and then they were going to the trash place and they fall off their car and blows trash all over the street. <sighs> Mr. Representative, <laughs> no matter if you're still here, uh, oh, Chris Carter. That's the hard way to go. So we actually have to make sure that we handle this daily. Is Curtis is Curtis here? Is Curtis not there? If he's not, and he sees this, I want us to thank Mr. Nelson personally because this person has picked up more than a ton of trash by himself in his group. Excellent. So, Stonecrest by the numbers. 
I won't bore you too much with this. However, you need to specifically know some of the numbers that we have and where we're going. City of Stonecrest, as we deliver world-class services as we are today, we completed 95% of all identified city work plans. We have a big chart on the board, and we're going to complete what it is that we have on that work plan, and we're at 95%. We feel that over 17,150 initiated calls from the call center. And in 2017, it was 7,300 calls. So the call volume with regards to the issues that we're covering have uh, dramatically increased. We were collecting all public utility franchise revenues, total more than $2.4 million in 2018, as Georgia Power, Snap and Shows, EMC, Atlantic Gas Line, AT&T, and Comcast. One thing that was critical about this is that this is the portion that the county could not collect. But we could, and that was one of the main keys of being able to revenue for coming to a city. We collected over 1.1 million in business licenses revenues, 1.1 million dollars from over 3,500 businesses right here in Stonecrest. This one is 3,500 active businesses in Stonecrest. And our GIS staff um, has developed the I really like this, the Pothole Reporter app. And folks are really using it for potholes in it. I see the pothole. <laughs> and they send it in, there's 133 potholes reported. And quite frankly, folks, that's how we know where they are. By the numbers, full quarter, uh, 2018, finished 2018 with surplus of uh, $800,000 for the year 2018. <laughs> No tax increase and the surplus. Developed a fiscally uh, conservative 2019 budget of $9.3 million. And folks, to tell you the truth, this is really almost to the dime, Julian, with regards to where we were with our study. And that made all the difference in the world. So we've been using that particular roadmap to make sure that we're okay. And we have a planned surplus of this year of a half a million dollars in the bank. All right. Uh, we started a new parks and recreation department. We talked about that, and our public work fun uh, public works function. We completed 2018 annual report, and I think you all may have the uh, perspective for 2019. Oh, that was the end of the 2018. For 2019, excellent, excellent. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Issued 635 building permits, residential and commercial. We collected 1.35 in building permits. We issued a total of. 10 variances and SLUV slow applications. Uh, we performed 7,500 building and land development inspections. Those are the folks that are building and moving forward in that, that area. And we investigated 4,300 plus code violations. Senior lifestyle housing right across the street from the cabinet. Have you guys seen it? Yeah. It is beautiful in the coming out. That is some complex to be able to see. That will be finished this year. 170 plus units dedicated to senior lifestyle, close approximately right across the street, of course, we're in healthcare, uh, and here shopping, uh, of course, and amenities. So, briefly, we're almost there, folks. Where are we going? Community, commerce, culture, working together. It's a world class city. This is the march you're going to love. Because I think you will also. We're going to take that Sears building, the out parcel, where it is with regards to the old Sears on the parking lot that had the title place. You all remember that? It's sitting there vacant. That is now going to be the new home of the East Precinct for the Cab County. training pieces and some other places uh, still here in Stonecrest that we have some opportunities that are on the table, but we're going to repurpose in combination with the DeKalb County Police Department. We're going to collaborate with the DeKalb CEO's office to secure what is called a long-term public safety agenda and partnerships. Quite frankly, folks, what we're doing is we are in reinventing with the county and with Stonecrest how policing will be done in the future. Let me give you an example. Right here we have our SWAT dollars that's dedicated to public safety. We're going to combine our SWAT
plus those with permission of the council and with permission of the commissioners so that those two entities can work together in collaboration. So instead of one entity spending all the money, how about two entities coming together for the need of the community that's right here? And that's what you'll see. You'll see, to imagine this, driving by Stonecrest Hall, and then you see 20 police cars out front. Yeah, this is how we do it. How about the bad guys, if I can use that term, they're coming out to the mall and they see 20 police cars parked out front. That cuts down on the bad guys. <laughs> How about you have a 911 call instead of 40 minutes, it's 7 minutes. They're coming right here in the center. That's collaboration. That's leadership. That's vision on the end of the county and the peace with regards to our, our, our city council and their commission folks. I'm going to put this city center somewhere. I don't care if it's Sam's. Target, baby dollars. Uh, it doesn't matter if you need somewhere. At the end of the day, you do. What one famous gentleman said there, read my lips. We are going to have a city center. And we're going to have some big and nice to go. So, what's been happening to us is that, see, you all get the end of the news target. You guys get, oh, baby dollars are closing. Toys are also closing. There's gloom and doom in Stonecrest. What Sabrina and I did is a call from 17 other developers and go, is that building ready yet? Yeah. <laughs> is it ready for distribution? Is it ready for network? Is it ready for the new type of retail that's coming to this era? Because you're going to get a shop. Like I'm shop before. There's no you know, there's hanging out, but they're this. This is how they're shopping. This is how they're shopping. And there needs to be areas of distribution and what needs to be delivered and happening from there. So the new style of retail, instead of the faces of it, we just happen to be in an area in time that the national chains are suffering across the board. They are suffering across the board. So do not be dismayed because for everyone that leaves, Sabrina Wright and I have two people that are calling. That's how busy we are with regards to what's happening. So the things that are happening in front of us, we have a chance from a municipal standpoint, from a bonding standpoint, from an economic development standpoint, to be able to help usher in some of the best things that you've ever seen. <laughs> this is I.C. Stokers. Live, work, play, worship, shop, educate. I want 400000 dollars condos. I want to ride their bikes. I want to make sure that they're doing whatever they need to do in this area with regards to commercially. I want us to retain our same uh, uh, style of life that we like out here in the servers, but have commercial and those other areas pay for our tax fees. So, how about that? I'm going to say this again. I'm an old dude. I don't have much time left. So oh, I'm not looking for the 40-year plan. I'm looking for the five-year plan. <laughs> I need to get that map. I still know who I am. <laughs> so that's right. I'm going to be pushing. I'm going to be pushing. And I'm going to be pushing. One thing they said about you, Pastor, over and over and over, I hear this, is that you're the right guy for the right time, for the right place in time. And I know what you are. Well, I'm that guy too. Yeah. I'm the right guy in the right place in the right time because I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to will it in place. All you have to do is just stand with me. Some of you all don't even have to help. I'm done. Just don't be in the way. That's all I need. Go home. I'm done.
neither one of them feel dumbness, so I ain't just <laughs>
it's coming to stone for us. That was we should be proud of because now we're able to fight for it, we're able to have a seat at the table and to make sure that this time around it happens for us because nobody's going to be able to tell me, well, you'll be on the next funding cycle. I don't think I'm going to live to 150. <laughs> <laughs> so, Valerie is going to have to be on this funding cycle. So, what I want you all to know is that we're representing you all and we have a seat at the table and we're going to make it happen here at Stonecrest. Last thing. 